A whole ton of research goes into every Total War game. So, to mark the release of Rome Remastered, Creative Assembly have sent me out into the field to discover how the Romans invaded Britain. Now, I was obsessed with the original Rome Total War. I sank hour after hour of my personal time into that thing, all in preparation for this, all training for this, when I, Phil Wang, would invade Britain myself. What, what do you mean? Well, that's what this show's about, isn't it? It's about how Rome Total War told me to invade Britain, so I'm going to do that. No, it's a documentary about how the Romans invaded Britain. Yeah, a documentary about how Rome Total War inspired me, Phil Wang, to invade Britain. Look, check it out. It's got myself a standard made. Thanks, Will. I mean, does it look like I'm not going to invade Britain? What? <laughs> it doesn't look like it to me. To mark the release of Total War Rome Remastered, Creative Assembly have sent me on a mission to discover how the Romans invaded Britain. Following in their footsteps, I'm going to learn how the Romans fought, Fire! ate, and built their way into history. I'm Phil Wang, and this is my guide to invading Britain. The crew don't seem to share my ambitions, but with the wind on my back and the sun in my face, I feel unstoppable. Knock knock Britain, daddy's home. Why are we just invading Britain anyway? You know the Romans got everywhere. Uh, Covid. It's just that, you know, they, they went to Cyprus and that. That would have been nice. Well, when you're playing Rome, the first thing you have to do when you hit a new part of the map is you need to find a settlement to take over to turn into your base of operations. You don't want your army just standing in a field doing nothing. So I'm going to a place called uh, Richborough Fort, which sounds pretty perfect for my intentions. Hopefully someone they will be able to point me in the right, right direction, get me started on my quest to conquer this sceptered isle. Oh, oh, that's heavy! Oh. He ain't heavy, he's my standard. But also, he's really blooming heavy. Now, Britain's had a rough couple of years, and what it needs is a bit of new leadership, i.e. me. So I'm off to Richborough Fort to discover how to begin that quest. You right there, Phil? Oh, hey, yeah. I'm okay. How's the car ride? Yeah, good cheers. How's the, how's the walk? Oh, long. Oh, long. Pretty tiring. And uh, this was very heavy. Didn't get any lighter. Well, this is, uh, this is Richborough Castle, apparently. Although it's not much of a castle. It's just kind of like... It's Richborough Fort. Yeah, all right. But I'm here to meet uh, a historian called Dr. Simon Elliott. He's going to tell me about the Romans, and I'm going to use information uh, in my own takeover of, uh, of the UK. Okay, don't, don't forget we need to learn about the Romans as well. Eh? Oh, yeah, 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 learn about the Romans, yeah, yeah, all that. Don't worry about that. All right, let's see what Simon says. Are you right with the, you're right with the stand? Oh, yeah, yeah, you just look after the camera. Ugh. This is fine. It's a testament to the quality of Roman engineering that only the vast majority of Richborough Fort is gone. I'm hoping Dr. Simon Elliott can tell me more about Richborough and why it was so important to the Romans. Ave, Simon. <laughs> oh. Ave, Phil, how are you? I'm good, how's it going? Well, it's oh. very windy in Roman Britain today, Phil. Yeah, it is. Not great standard carrying weather. But it is great Gladius Hispaniensis carrying weather. So I've got this to give you. This is your oh, wow. Roman Gladius. Yes. Yes. This is paying off already. Is this for maintaining social distancing? Uh, that really will maintain social distancing, possibly permanently. Well, this is an amazing place, Phil, because this is the beginning and the end of Roman Britain in one place. You so mean? you have the invasion ditches over there from when the Romans landed in the Claudian invasion of AD 43, which created Roman Britain. And then in this very place here, you also have the last coin hoard found in Roman Britain, beginning and end. Where we're standing now is probably the middle of Roman Britain. This is where a huge monumental arch was built, which would have been as big as the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, clad in Carrera marble from Italy. So it would have been immense and beautiful. That's my favorite marble. Well, there you go. <laughs> Gleaming white. Wow. And as you would have arrived in Roman Britain, you'd have arrived there. That's where the coast was. Um, and you'd have walked through the middle of the arch 
and then as you walk through the middle, you'd have entered Roman Britain. Wait, I walked from Dover and I could have walked just from there? Yeah, right, literally from over there. <laughs> if you guys had done your research, I could have started over there. Do you realise that? Sorry, mate. Well, thanks, Simon. Could have used that information about uh, 100 miles ago. Well, this is great. Not only does Simon have a downright fantastic goatee, he also knows a lot about the Romans. And if you do that for long enough, it eventually just falls down. The Romans reused everything, so imagine you've got a midden of all the stuff the Romans threw away. They'd smash up loads of it and just chuck it in the mortar. So one of the things they used was one of their favourite foods, which is oyster shells. Ooh, ooh la So there you go, there's an oyster shell. So a very, very easily farmed uh, source of local protein. Hey, this is pretty good for a gift shop museum. So you can see here, for example, this is a fantastic model of the triumphal arch, which we stood on earlier. So you can see where we were standing, that's where those steps are on the base in the middle. And if you just go around that way, you is can see... Is this smaller than it would have been? Uh, yes. <laughs> this is an arch to an emperor called Domitian, who was the emperor towards the end of the first century AD, when the Romans could claim for a short period of time, and the only time, that they'd conquered the whole of the main island of Britain. If he didn't say, Domitian accomplished, I will be furious. <laughs> and if you look behind you... Oh, yes! Yes, this is what I want. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad price, actually. Guys, the production budget will cover this, right? OK, well, we'll need to check with CA about the budget. That's £400. Great. Bye now. I'll be. I'll be now. I'll be. You right, Phil? I'm a bit more than a right, pal. Look at me. Oh, forgive me if I feel a little bit prepared. <sighs> How much is all that? This? Oh, a couple of hundred pounds. But you can't put a price on victory. Okay, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty hungry. There's a oyster farm here, around here. I'm gonna head over there and I'm gonna get sloping. Okay, um, we're gonna jump in the van. Oh yeah, would you mind taking the standard? Because, you know, I've got my hands full at the moment. You're not, you're not gonna carry it? I think you, you guys should have a go. I've been hogging it, you know. So you, you put it in the, in, the, in the van and uh, I'll meet y'all there. All right, mate. See All right, ya. see ya. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Just like the Romans, I love oysters too. And I've been working up an appetite all morning. So I'm on my way to Whitstable, a town famed for its oysters for centuries, where I'll meet James, an oyster farmer. Ugh. All right. Oh. Never worked this hard for a lunch. Mm -hmm. You're just going to leave the armor there, are you? Well, I don't think anyone's going to nick it. Hi, James. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. The oyster farm is just over here. Might take me about a, an hour to get there in this. I've just come from Richborough Fort, which is an old Roman fort, and yep. they found just loads of oyster shells buried there. Romans are quite a few. There's a history of Roman ships in this area. There was a Roman wreck off Rakova. Rakova Towers was a Roman settlement oh. uh, just down the coast. Um, you, you, there's been metal detectors who have found Roman coins on just here, and that's because this area, they used to bring ships in um, and dry them out. They took oysters from here back to Rome, because you can pack an oyster and it can last for literally weeks if you do it properly. Now, James, as you might be able to tell, I'm currently invading Britain, and it's going very well. So I'm going to need some uh, nutrition, some victuals. Yeah. Let's go and get some oysters and get you some, get some in your stomach. Thanks, James. No problem. Exactly what I want. How many do you want? Oh, um, a, bag. Couple, yeah, a bag or two. Well, we'll see how we get on with one. OK. Mm-hmm. Thank you, James. No, Pete, Pete, you can't, you can't eat that, mate. What do you mean? He, he ate like 15. Yeah, but they need to be purified. What do you mean purified? It's a, it's a sea, it's you're an oyster. You're your own man, Phil. <laughs> I'm it's not covered in insurance. <laughs> no man is free of insurance, James. Well... You can look at it. I'll look at it for a bit then. <laughs> it does look nice. You're going to have that, don't you? I'm going to tell you. This is terrible. <laughs> this is perverse, what you're doing. Mm. 
Wow, that's the best one a lot, actually. <laughs> well, where can I get a purified oyster around? You can get James? them at the Lobster Shack at the East Key. Oh, nice one. OK, Lobster okay. Shack. Well, cheers. Thanks a lot, uh, James. No worries, Phil. Please show me around the oyster bar. Enjoy the oysters. Oh, I'll try if I'm allowed. I'm not authorised to eat an unpurified oyster because of, I don't know, Brexit. So I'm off to meet food historian Sally Granger, who's going to teach me a few Roman oyster recipes, and will hopefully have some that I can actually eat. Ave, Sally. Hello. How's it going? I'm well, thank you. Um, uh, it's a lovely day. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, now, Sally, you, you're a food historian, is that right? That's right, yes. You know all about really old food. I know all about Roman food. That's uh, perfect, because I'm here for a, a Roman feast. Come on, uh, Sally, let's have some oysters. No, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait. We need to make fish sauce <sighs> first. Fish sauce is fundamental to all of Roman food. It went into everything. It went into desserts. This is a gourmet fish sauce, and I want you to try it, because oh, you've never had fish sauce like this. Ooh! Isn't mm. that magic? It's salty. It's tasty. It's not actually as fishy as you think it's, it's going to be. It's not fishy at all. So, pass me the bowl. Fresh sardine. A bit bigger than you think. Yeah. And each little... Oh, you see, it's split already. Each, oh. each sardine has got inside it its little bundle of, oh. vi of viscera. Usually people avoid those bits. No, the, these are the best bits. That's the first bit people cut if out. If you want to make fish sauce, this is what you need. You need to expose the viscera to the salt. You know what, Sally, you are solving my hunger problem. I'm not very hungry anymore. You're not very hungry anymore. No, you see, this is the trouble with fish. It makes people go a bit, mm, because it potentially... I mean, it's not the fish, it's more that, really, that, yeah, that's, that's what's putting me off. We're going to put, we're just going to fill up our, our little jar with fish. So I think that'll probably do. Mmm, so delish. What, what will happen now, see, we want about 15% Salt, that's what the recipe states. We're just going to estimate, basically. Shake that fish, Miss Sally Granger, shake that fish. Put some salt and shake it up. Make sauce and put it on me oyster. The garum we've just made won't be ready for a couple of months yet, and I'm hungry now. So fortunately, Sally's brought some ready-made stuff. Sorry, Sally, don't take it personally. Really? Some of us are just blessed. Yeah. Oh. It's all right. Oyster time. Oyster time. Yes, Sally, oysters are famous in aphrodisiac, so were the Romans just oh. horny all the time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. Is that what the shields were there to hide, because they were all embarrassed? Yeah, or... <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Roman soldiers weren't allowed to marry. God, that must have made it worse. Let's put the black garum on this, shall oh, we? Oh, shall we? Just put the black garum on it. Well, cheers, Ave. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. So Roman, so good. Do you reckon the Roman soldiers also went like this? I think it probably did, yes. Well, thank you so much, Sally. That was delicious. It was fishy. Was. It was deficious. Mm. And uh, Ave, I guess. Have a good one. Have a good one. Ah. I hope uh, you don't meet any resistance. Oh, uh, well, if I do, I'm strong and uh, full of seafood. You're going to take your knife? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a sword, it's not a knife. It's, okay. it's a big sword, strong, powerful sword. Uh, that, that's a knife there. The oysters were great. Plus, I found a new appreciation for rotten fish. But now it's time to say goodbye to the coast, before I make my way to London for the next leg of my campaign. You right, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. How you doing? How's your day been? Oh, it's been a good day. I've done a lot. I've landed on firm ground, terra firma. I've learned some fort mechanics, got myself a sweet suit of armor, and I've got a couple oysters in there, too. OK, so we're going to jump in the van, then. You're ready to go? The Romans didn't have vans. I'm going to be walking. It's a nature's bit, van. It's a bit of a way away. Well, yeah, so was Rome. It didn't stop for them. Right, OK, do you want your standard? Yes, I want my standard, Toby. Why don't I get it if I don't want it? There you, Thank there you. you go, mate. Oh. Right, oh, yeah. um, 9 o'clock tomorrow, then, yeah? 9 a.m.? Yeah. I'll see you there. All right, mate. All right. Take it easy. Good night. Join me next time as I sign up to a Roman cult. Are you a member? I 
couldn't really tell you. No, you go, that was a test and you passed with flying colours. Train a few troops. Interior. off. He doesn't look very happy with that. And command them in battle. Charge! In my quest to invade Britain.